Well, we have a special treat for all of our history and film buffs out there. What could these two groups have in common? Well, you're about to learn today. We're going to take a step back in time and get an opportunity to learn about a movie theater that has been a staple in its community, my community, for over, gosh, 90, 80 years now. This theater has seen it all, from the golden age of Hollywood to the rise of blockbuster films. It's really not just a place to watch movies, it's a living piece of history. And to teach us about this beautiful, timeless landmark that has been entertaining generations for almost a century is Scott Freeman, General Manager of the Farmington Civic Theater. Welcome to Celebrate Michigan, the show produced by students on the campus of Madonna University. I'm Chris Benson, and a proud resident of Farmington, where the Farmington Theater is located. It's a great place to live, isn't uh, it? Hey. It is, it is. Welcome, Scott. Glad Thank to you. have you today. So, um, 80 years. It's been a part of the community. I know you have not been with the theater for 80 years. Thank you. Um, but, but tell us what you know of the history of the theater. Well, as you know, I have my elevator speech. You know, you try and be brief, but get enough details out so people appreciate the theater. And uh, it used to be an AMP grocery store back in 1939. Uh, that was torn down, and the, the theater was uh, constructed, opened in September of 1940 to a huge crowd, and if you can believe it, back then there were 700 chairs in the entire theater. Those are the nice little teeny hardwood, floor, uh, hardwood seats with no cup holders, no nothing. And now, in both of our auditoriums, we only have about 400 seats, so you can see how many were crammed together there. So through the years, you know, they've, it went through World War II and scrap metal drives and, and bond uh, sales and war uh, movies and things like that. Um, had a lot of really good years through the 50s and 60s. Um, it's been a staple in downtown Farmington for movies, and matter of fact, for the entire area. You know, even like Livonia, we get a lot of people from Livonia that come up. So it's like everybody's downtown Farmington and the theater has uh, done well because of that. Um, later on, there were, uh, you know, a few little challenges here and there, so they decided to add on to the uh, theater and make it a, a, make two auditoriums out of one. They closed the balcony, made that a separate, uh, separate screen, so now we have two since then. Um, and at this point, the city of Farmington owns it, and it continues to be a, a well-run operation with a great, uh, great staff and great uh, visitors. Well, and it's just such the classic, iconic, outdoor, buy-your-ticket theater with the marquee. And, you know, it's one of the things that definitely attracted us. Um, my husband and I to move to Farmington was the vibrancy of the downtown area and it just seems like it's right out of it's a wonderful life right you've got that theater down there you're like what's playing this week um, what do you think the theater means to the city well you know if Farmington is like a lot of small towns throughout the United States and in those small towns I think people really appreciate having a hardware store and a grocery store and, and some kind of entertainment uh, venue along with restaurants and other things to do and I think uh, Farmington is a good uh, representation of that, you know, ideal. So we have a lot of people that move to Farmington for, you know, the schools as well as being close to the downtown area. And my wife and I, we live a five-minute walk away from downtown, so we really appreciate it, and I know a lot of other people do too. So I think even if people have to drive to town, they know when they arrive, there's lots of things to do, you know, eye candy, if you will, and they can, you know, go see a movie and have a meal or have a meal and go see a movie, go ice skating, things like that. So it's a great package in downtown, and I think the theater is a good part of it. And I understand we have a picture, um, a few pictures to show. So, ooh, some historic pictures. Yeah, that was taken last Thursday. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, no, um, it's interesting. That's taken from Grand River Avenue running through town. And you can see how the steps are coming up off of the roadway. And through the years, you can see those steps, the number of steps and the step heights change from time to time. So that's one of the uh, scrap metal drives I was telling you about during World War II. Wow. You know, metal cans, metal containers, that kind of stuff, you know, recycle to make into, you know, airplane sidings and bullets and things like that. So it's a great example when uh, everybody used to dress very nicely, whether they were going to do something nice or not. So all the suits and things. Wow. Oh, and look, it has real live air conditioning at one point in its yeah, history. <laughs> yeah, the penguins tell the story, right? That's, you know, air conditioning is still a relatively new invention. And uh, back then, any kind of building, uh, bowling alleys, uh, movie theaters really hyped the fact that you could be comfortable and not sweating in the middle of the summer. So they, they really promoted the heck out of it back then. I have a feeling if I went up to get a ticket, it would be like five cents or 25 cents or something like that at that point, perhaps? Um, the, in 1940, the cheapest ticket was 10, 10 to 12 cents. Adults wow. were 25 cents. 
So that includes two cents tax too. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, and Rocky, look at that. Yeah, Rocky, big crowds back then. You know, that's back in a time when the theaters, there were, there were fewer theaters out there and really no multiplexes. There weren't places with 20 screens and 10 screens, let alone, you know, four. So a movie would play for months and months and months, sometimes six, nine months at a time. And Rocky, you know, obviously was a, was a huge one at the time. And you can see the people waiting to get inside. The demand, and, and it was a community experience for sure. Yeah, and it, it, they had all nice signs up. You know, a lot of these were hand painted. You know, uh, there's the war bonds that I, I mentioned before too, and the great posters. And that's the old facade. Things have changed a little bit nowadays, but uh, it's always had that classic look. You can see mm -hmm. on the right side of the screen the box office, which is now on the left side, yep. and our concessions counter is over there too. So it's always fun to look through the look through the old old pictures. Well, and I know people love to get their pictures taken near the theater. I know anytime I'm downtown, I see someone getting a picture, you know, taken nearby. Um, and I understand the theater can also be rented out. Like you show movies there for showing movies, but there's other purposes. What else is the theater used for? Well, we do get a lot of photos, like you mentioned, you know, engagement photos, wedding photos after the after the wedding. But uh, we we have private screenings that are available, so we get people that come in. Uh, that it could be just a couple that wants to see their favorite movie or you know a, a small family that comes in. Sometimes we get larger groups to watch whatever movie they want to watch. And uh, also rentals, so we have churches that uh, come in to do rentals. We've had weddings there, yeah, comedy shows, uh, movie screenings, everything from short movies that are eight to 10 minutes long to full features. Uh, we've even had people rent the theater uh, to mix surround sound for their cinematic release. Now these are smaller pictures, but they use our venue to master uh, the audio and they set up all their equipment in the theater and you know, get their producers and directors there. So if you wanna rent the theater for anything, we, we can do it. Awesome, wonderful. Well, I can't believe it's already time for us to get to a break. It goes by so fast. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to make sure our viewers stay tuned because we have so much more we're gonna dive into. Talk a little bit about the history of um, how film has changed over the years and, and the format and then um, talk about some of your favorite things about the theater, because I know you've spent some time with it. Yes, awesome. I'm ready. Well, we'll see you back in just a minute. Stay tuned. Just recently, my wife and I took in her sister's children. And we already had four, so I went from becoming a family man to a man with a bigger family. <clears throat> now, you can't eat love, so I don't know how I'm gonna feed them tonight. How was that, Rich? I think I look more like Denzel. <laughs> That's cold, man. Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. Nice. Moms everywhere are finding ways to keep kids active and healthy. Works every time. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. Yes, ready, ready. Oh, come on, Randy. Animal shelter, here I come. And no, I'm not crazy or emotionally damaged. That's a stereotype. I just belong to a total loser. I'm a good dog. So if you want a pet, adopt. And if you see Randy, tell him he dropped his wallet. I present to you Algebra 2. Foreign languages. And finally, biology. Who among you will step up to their challenge? Me. Yeah, do it. Me too. Sign me Take up. on the tough classes now. You need them to prepare for college.
Welcome back to Celebrate Michigan. We're joined by Scott Freeman, General Manager for the Far Farmington Civic Theater in beautiful downtown Farmington. And in the last segment, you talked to us a bit about the history of the theater. Um, there's been a lot of changes um, to the physical structure, and it's been neat to see the pictures and all of that. But um, the way films are shown has also changed over the years. So um, I know we're in like a digital age now and the theater went digital at one point. So it's, it's so let me just ask, in the back room, it's not those two reels anymore where like, you know, <laughs> you hear the tick, 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 tick. Um, how has it changed over the years? Well, I, I've been there since 2010 and when I started, we were still film. And that was uh, I don't know, maybe two or three years into uh, theaters converting to digital. And there was an overlap where many theaters would keep their old style film projectors as well as having the new digital ones as well. And uh, it was expensive. So they would try maybe do a portion. Maybe if they had you know 10 screens, they'd do one a year for a while. And maybe they got some more, they'd do two or three a year and finally get there. So for us, we converted in 2013. It cost us about 150 grand okay. for two screens for all the infrastructure, servers, the digital projectors. So you can imagine what 10 or 20 would cost somebody. So we removed our old film projectors and because so many of them were being uh, removed from service, there was really no value to them. So we ended up uh, giving them pretty much away to a guy that wanted to put something together for his personal use up in the Port Huron area. Oh wow. And I think that was what happened to a lot of the old projectors. Although we have one old one, if you come to our theater in our museum area. There's an old one from probably the 1930s, 40s when we first uh, started showing movies there. But today it's all digital. We either, most digital theaters, they either could get uh, their movies in on a hard drive or they receive them via satellite and put them on a separate server and then put them into the uh, uh, projector server at that point. So it's all crisp and clean. You don't have any film breaking or scratches and anything like that. So it's a, it's a big improvement and they're a lot lighter to carry than the old films because you mentioned the reels, right? Yeah. Many movies could be up to you know, you know six, seven, eight reels and you had to splice them all together into one big huge pancake back in the day. So we don't have to do that anymore. And I'm not going to have that awkward moment where the film melts on the screen and the, everybody goes, oh. Correct. Then, now that's just a special effect. Even though You don't want that, but now you can use that in your, your editing you effects, right? Yeah. Well, and I think you bring up an interesting um, like crossroads for the theater because it, you mentioned there's a museum there and you've got like some historical pieces to show, but you're also in, um, in, in the now, right? Because things are changing so quickly. What has that been like and, and how have the crowds been who come to the theater um, in response? to the, that, that kind of intersection you find yourself at between history and today? Well, one thing I like to tell people when I'm asked a similar question like that is that we're old school up front, high tech in the background. Nice. So we have a nice like tin ceiling when you come into the mm -hmm. lobby, a nice tile floor with a mosaic of the theater and the theater logo there. We have the old slide in letter boards for our menu items. We could do LEDs if we wanted to, but that's not reflective of being a, a 1940s era movie theater. So we try and keep that vibe and that feel when people are there, what they can see. But then again, it's all digital in the background. The technology is there as well. So it's, it's that good mix that you mentioned. And talk about the popcorn because it is a We staple. don't serve popcorn. Oh, yeah, of course not. <laughs> no, well, just none. Talk about I, refreshments, right? Like that's part of the experience. And I know um, it's definitely something I like to partake in when I'm there. Popcorn, I, I would say, is, is the mainstay of any movie theater, and we are fortunate enough that we can make it fresh in front of your eyes, uh, not necessarily in a back room or brought in from a, another supplier type of thing. So sometimes it can get quite noisy with our popper there, but people can see that it's nice and fresh. And I'll tell you, there's nothing better than smelling the very first batch of the day. Uh, I don't know why it smells better than the rest, but it, it, it really does. And, you know, people are recognized, the regulars that we have, we know exactly what they're going to order. And uh, with some of our members that uh, are in our system, it'll pop up and say, hey, you know, Bill wants his uh, large, large popcorn and his uh, um, snow cats or whatever, uh, uh, snow yeah. caps, yeah. And you, I know you have a special program um, for frequent theater goers. Talk a little bit about that, what people get as a part of that. Well, we have a loyalty program like mm -hmm. many theaters, but we also have a, a new membership program that we debuted last year. And the idea was, you know, it's a great way to support the theater. And, you know, if, even if you don't want to see that many movies, but it's a really good deal. So it's 16 bucks a month and you can see unlimited movies. And then we also have one that's a little bit more expensive, but you get free popcorn and pop while you're seeing your movies as well. So uh, we get people that really utilize them to the max and it gives people an opportunity, you know, this is part of the idea, 
uh, to maybe sample a movie that you might not otherwise go see because it's already paid for. And sure. you're only you're paying 16 bucks a month. So it's, it's been well received and our mayor, Mayor Bowman, was actually the very first uh, member uh, when we debuted it. She's a great cheerleader for the town and for the theater. Oh, that's awesome. I know the city um, really supports the theater and is very proud of their theater. And um, that makes a whole, it, it's a whole um, experience because I know having been to the theater, you come there on Friday nights in the summer, there's usually some entertainment out front. Um, that it's, it's a draw, it's a whole experience. Right. Yeah. And I know we've got, I've heard um, people playing the violin, people playing all different kinds of um, instruments. How does that add to the experience? Well, that was something that we started back in 2016 or 17, one of those two, it's got a way back machine now. Um, I thought it'd be a great idea to just put some music out there. And it's, it's called busking or people call it street performing. And uh, we, we recruit people and it's now by word of mouth, people come in and play and they open their case and people throw in donations. Mm -hmm. So you're right, there, there's all different types of uh, situations. There's quartets, there's brass ensembles that come out. Some people just play in a, the uh, cello type of thing and it adds a lot of life and that was one of the goals is to add a little bit more life to downtown when you're just walking around, oh, here's something else. And obviously it draws some attention to the theater specifically, which is nice as well. Yeah, I like to linger out there and sometimes you'll be walking by and you'll hear someone, you'll say, oh my gosh, that is an amazing performance. Yeah. I mean, it just adds to, again, um, great for date nights, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're gonna take a short break and when we come back, we'll hear more about the Civic Theater and Scott's history with film in the theater. We'll be right back, stay tuned. Sounds like you could use some Van Gogurt. It's fortified with arts-rich nutrients to improve your math and reading skills. Catch! Van Gogurt, thanks. So what's the deal with your ear? Always with the ear, huh? Feed your kids the arts. For 10 simple ways to learn how, visit americansforthearts.org. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. Fast-paced family life in need of a slowdown? Dr. Spruce. Did you know all those green shapes on maps are parks and forests? It's true. Visit discovertheforest.org and plan to visit a park or forest near you, instead of just wondering what it would have been like. While the word forest might make you think of distant lands from far, far away, please note parks and forests are closer than you think, which means things like beautiful scenery, fresh air, and family time are also closer than you think. So, where are you going out tonight? I can't. My parents say I have to be home right after work. <sighs> That's so gay. Totally gay. Ugh, that is so Emma and Julia. Why are you saying that so Emma and Julia? Well, you know, when something is dumb or stupid, you say that so Emma and Julia. Who says that? Everyone. Imagine if who you are were used as an insult. When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. Welcome back again to Celebrate Michigan. We're joined by Scott Freeman, General Manager for the Farmington Civic Theater. And I was sharing with Scott one of my um, favorite memories at the theater, and it was seeing um, a local, um, a local film, but you know, of local interest was the Russian Five film. Yeah. Um, and I remember seeing it, and we had, you know, it was one of the few theaters I think that was showing it at the time. And getting there, and I thought, oh, this is just going to be another film about, you know, the Red Wings, and you know, going through. Um, the unfortunate accident that occurred, and um, 
having lived at that time in the Detroit area and, you know, celebrating the win of the Stanley Cup and then the downfall of, you know, the, the terrible accident, the theater, it was such an emotional experience. Like people were crying, people were just, you could just feel it. It's a small theater and it just felt like, um, it was palpable. So I'm sure you've had many of those experiences over the years. Um, any favorite memories you have of, like that of, you know, movies that either really got you in the, you know, the feels or that well, you witnessed experiences? It's interesting that you mentioned that because there was, there was a man who was starting to do a documentary about the social aspect of movie theaters. And you mentioned people laughing next to you or crying next to you. You can't get that sitting at home, you know, watching the TV by yourself or watching your screen, right? So that's part of the big reason to go to out to see movies and you experience that. So um, the Red Wings movie um, was a great example of that. And we've had others that, I don't want to give away endings because some of them are current movies, but you see people leaving the theater and they're sobbing and they say, you should have given us Kleenex, <laughs> you know, before yeah. we came into that yeah. too. So um, there's some that were surprisingly successful, really smaller movies. And that's always nice to get that coup and like the Red Wings movie you mentioned too. I was fortunate enough just to see that in an article and say, hey, I think that would be a good fit for us. But you have to be at the right time to do that mm -hmm. and not have plans that prohibit you from doing right. something like that. Right. Too. So I'm, I, I like all kinds of movies and I'll never admit to my wife that I cry at some, but some do have, have an effect on me. And I, I love it whether you're laughing or crying. You, know. you get some popcorn salt in your eye. Wayne's I World. Yeah. Oh, Wayne's World. There you go. Yeah. There's a, yeah, that's a tearjerker. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah and I, I, I really think that, you know, I'm sure during COVID there were some challenges, you know, and, and I know theaters, it seems like it was very uncertain what the future was for them. Um, where do you think you see the future of the theater? Where, where are things going? I think people still value theaters. Um, demographically, um, younger people tend to not be as uh, uh, enthralled with it, but they still do come out for certain titles. And that's uh, what we look for in our programming as well. We want to have most the most movies that will appeal to more people than fewer. We have two screens, so we have to be a little bit more careful with our with our programming. But with that being said, there's all kinds of streaming options out there, subscription services, whatever you know. You can find specific niche companies that will feed your entertainment needs if you want. But I think there's always going to be life for the theater. There may still be some thinning out, especially some of the big players that are out there. But I think some of the uh, small town ones like the Penn and Plymouth, the Farmington mm -hmm. Civic Theater, the Redford Theater, they have special um, place in most people's hearts. And I think that'll stay. Mm -hmm. And you know, we talked about the uh, museum at the theater that you have. Uh, where is it located and can people just walk in and see it and, and how can they how can they visit it? Yeah, well, we have our main floor that's uh, right off the sidewalk when you walk in. That's our main theater. Just walk right in, go up some steps. That's the second floor and that's where our museum is and we have some restrooms up there. But there's all kinds of photos up there. The old projector that I mentioned, a banjo from Skip that used to play in front of the theater. He owned the used bookstore next year or next door for quite a while. Um, and then you go up further to what used to be the balcony and now is our other theater up there. But yeah, they can walk in and just say, hey, heard you have a th uh, the museum up there, let us look at it, we'd be happy to show them. And what would they see in there? In the museum? Yeah. That's what well, we saw some of the photos yeah. uh, earlier. You'll see those photos as well oh. as some other ones. There's old ticket stubs from events that we've had. There's a, a radio that uh, was found a few years ago hanging on an I-beam in our attic oh. that was there from 1989 during construction. Some worker left it there and when we plugged it in, it was still tuned to WCSX. Oh, so, I love it. So <laughs> little I things like that that, that we find were, were it, it puts a smile on our face to be able to put mm -hmm. it up in the museum. And I know the city is very involved with the theater and that you also have other partnerships. Um, what kind of partnerships do you have with the theater and how does that help um, with the future of what is in store for the Farmington Civic? Well, uh, many people don't know the city of Farmington actually owns the theater. Mm -hmm. um, so there's obviously a tie-in there. And the partnerships we've developed are not only with the city, but the Downtown Development Authority or what's branded as Downtown Farmington. We uh, cooperate with them on special events. Uh, uh, and it works well for everybody. Um, we try to advertise and promote the best that we can. We have partnerships in the schools and other groups that we provide uh, complimentary popcorn for their fundraisers and things like that. So just trying to, you know, everybody scratches each other's back and mm -hmm. you want everybody to think about the theater and the best way to do that is, you know, immerse yourself and make yourself available to, to help them as well. And I know you've um, been a resident for a long time 
and also have invested a lot of time, not just in the theater, but in, you know, you mentioned the downtown area. Um, what do you see as the future for the downtown area? We talked about the theater, but then, you know, where do you see it going? Well, generally speaking for the downtown, I've, I've seen quite a bit of improvement, and I was actually part of the Downtown mm -hmm. Development Authority for a while. And the, the streetscape that went in on Grand River a number of years ago has been replicated on Farmington Road, just south of Grand River at this point. Mm -hmm. So there's landscaping, lighting, brick pavers, widening the sidewalks allows more restaurants to have more of a presence outdoor dining uh, wise and I think everybody loves that and the whole point of it all and it is to have walkability mm -hmm. and always be able to walk a block or two down the road and say hey there's something else I'll keep walking and you know figure out what the next uh, next thing that will suit your fancy would be. Well, um, I just want to thank you for sharing a little bit of your passion. It really came through for the theater and the city and um, all that you do for it. We want to thank you for coming on and telling us all about it today. Thanks for having me. And we celebrate um, all our small towns and our big towns as well. And we want to thank you also for watching today and hearing about the Farmington Civic Theater. We hope you'll check it out. And we're really glad you watch us um, celebrate all the great things happening in Michigan. Aren't there great things happening in the Mitten State? Stay tuned and we'll see you next time.